So we begin now with the first verse of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, bearing in mind the title, Satan in the Temple of God. As that the day of Christ is at hand, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. Now notice something here very carefully. It says there would come a falling away first. I want to tell you, without any hesitation, reservation, or equivocation, terminology used by the Masons, I want to tell you that there has come a falling away. It's happened. It's a massive falling away. And it's also happened in places where you probably haven't looked. And it goes on to say that this man of sin would be revealed the son of perdition. Perdition is a word defined as eternal damnation. So there is a son of eternal damnation that would rise up and nobody would recognize him as such except to whom it was revealed. Do you understand today that this entire nation, this entire world is nothing but a big con game? That every enterprise that is going on, whether it be the religious biz, whether it be government, education, all of it is a lie and filled with deceit and temptation. All of it is corrupted by Satan. This world, the Bible says, is condemned already. John spoke with a, a heart toward the people of God as he wrote his epistles, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. And in 1st John, he wrote, the whole world lieth in wickedness. All of it. All of the well-intentioned, flag-waving people. All of the people who choose to think that this is a Christian nation and that we have a Christian president. We are going to measure all things by the word of God. All things. And not only by part of it, but by the whole counsel of God. It's the only way to do it. You need to know this book. If you haven't read the Bible yet, you need to cover to cover as fast as you can. As soon as you can. I'm just warning you. You're going to need it. You're going to need to know what it says. And so we see that a warning is given here. That there is a man of sin, but he will be revealed. Revealed from on high. God making it known to us. It isn't by your expertise, by your intelligence, by your ability to figure things out that you'll ever figure anything out of heaven. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, the Bible says. We are changed. Our body won't get there. And the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit, neither can he, for they are spiritually discerned. Thus, we must depend on God's grace and mercy to reveal the truth to us. Amen? You know, it's kind of amazing how you look at the Freemasons, secret societies. They all have these secret oaths, secret handshakes, secret passwords. And when they take that secret oath, such as when you become a Master Mason in the Masonic Lodge in the third degree. Did you ever hear that expression, they gave me the third degree? Well, you know where it came from. Or, I've been blackballed, it comes from Freemasonry, doesn't it? All these different, you know how many words are in a vocabulary that we use that came from witchcraft and secret societies? It's absolutely astounding. But they will say in their oath that they will always conceal and never reveal. Nothing is ever revealed in the Masonic Lodge. It's always concealed, concealed, concealed. Secret this, secret that. You never know the person above you, one notch above you, you have no knowledge of what they went through or what's going on in their life because uh, they outrank you and you haven't been there yet. And you know, I've had Masons tell me, for an example, that they're Christians. There are churches that accept them as Christians. 
There are fundamentalist churches that have Masons in there and consider them Christian brothers. And I've had Masons and other members of secret societies tell me, yes, I'm a Christian and a Mason, or whatever they're into. And you know, Jesus said, and made it very clear to the people that he was speaking to, in secrecy, I have said nothing. Hmm? What we have is open. If the gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost. We proclaim the truth of God's word, the blood of Jesus, the power of his spirit to call you and save you. It's open. People can come in and watch us baptize people. They can watch us dedicate babies. They can watch us reach out to the Lord and do all those things he commanded us to do. But you see, in secret societies, it's all hidden, secret, behind the scenes. Why? Remember this and never forget it. The only purpose of secrecy is to hide evil. This gospel is a glorious light that shines forth. But there is a strange mystery at work in churches, in fundamentalist churches, in people that call themselves Jesus' name churches, all kinds of churches. Watch this carefully because it is coming to pass before our very eyes. And I'm not a little rattled about it. I am very stirred up about it. Watch what it says here. So it said that there would be a man of sin revealed, son of perdition, verse 4 says, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God. Remember how Paul told the Corinthians that there are many gods that are considered to be gods, but really they are no gods. But there would be one that would be superseding all gods. Kind of a strange ecumenism, drawing everything together. Above all that is called God, so that, or that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Now, there are a lot of different views on this. They, you know, they always say that uh, there's two ways to do everything, but only one is right. Now, some say, well, this has to be the Pope sitting over there in St. Peter's Basilica. Now, the Pope is an Antichrist. He is in cooperation with Antichrist spirits. Roman Catholicism is not Christianity. nothing to do with Christianity. It is a decoy. It is a clever mixture of every kind of paganism on earth. We know that. And some say, well, it's the Pope sitting over there. Wait, wait a minute now. That St. Peter's Basilica is not the temple of God. So where is the temple of God? Some say, well, they're going to build it. That's going to be the temple of God. I'll tell you this. Jesus came he said, destroy this temple in three days, I will raise it up. And he did. And he became the chief cornerstone. And I'll tell you what the temple of God is, even before I read any further. The temple of God is a spiritual building. God's people, you and I, are lively stones built up in habitation for the Lord. In the Old Testament, God had a temple for his people. In the New Testament, he has his people for a temple. 